and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. All right, well, we are out here on the launch pad today with a, uh, well, it's a Artemis 2 topped off on what is uh, lovingly being called a uh, DN4B. Uh, the B is for the upper stage. It's a single J2. We've seen that in action before. The uh, DN4 indicates that we now have uh, four boosters and all, uh, what, three, six, nine, twelve E1 engines are the E1 advanced for a bunch of added thrust. And we have one other little guest star down here, which I guess I'll tuck away my nav ball so that you can see it. We have a uh, J2 Aerospike engine. Um, at launch, only the Aerospike will fire up just to kind of help get it off the launch pad. The J2Ss will fire up uh, once we are in altitude where they will see a uh, much better ISP than they w will here at sea level. But uh, we have some interesting contracts. Finally, our reputation is high enough to where they'll let us send people to uh, the moon, or at least to orbit it. Oh, our relative inclination is low enough, so oh, I need my nav ball back. Uh, throttle is pegged to full, SAS is on, ignition sequence start. We are lit. Let's get those clamps off, and we will ease very slowly off the launch pad. <laughs> anyway, we have a contract to go and do a three-person crewed orbital of the moon, which is a, uh, a first for this space program. We've never sent more than one Kerbal uh, to any place but uh, low Earth orbit. So this will be the first time more than one uh, person crew is going to be going to uh, higher orbits or to go orbit the moon, really. So there's that first. We're not going to land on it, but we do have other contracts, and one of them is to, to uh, do a lunar impactor with uh, some amount of joules of energy and record it with a seismometer. And in order to do that, we have to land a seismometer on the surface. So uh, I will get to showing you the landing craft and the impactor once um, we get these fairings off. So we are carrying with us a little bit of cargo, but we are not going to put a crew member down. Uh, just a batch of robotic instruments. All right, uh, and we're starting to drift off of our node here. Why are we drifting north and why don't, oh yeah. Uh, I may have forgotten some things that I needed to do. This is not good. Let's get some gimbling back here. All right, now we've got some gimbal. And I have just wasted a bunch of fuel going in the wrong direction. Nope, that's too much. Come on. All right, well, I'm going to wrestle with this rocket. <laughs> Hopefully with uh, a little more success than our last launch. All right. And I, I should have been leaning way... Oh, come on. Easy, easy. All right. Okay, sorry. Uh, I'm going to wrestle this thing into an orbit, hopefully, and I'll pick all of you up there. All right, well, there's our orbit, 267 by 176. Uh, that little snafu has gotten us a little close to our margin. We have uh, 3,600 meters per second left in our J2 stage, but we will, of course, lose some of that to boil off, uh, presumably before we can make our burn. Let um, me get this uh, antenna turned on. Earth, thank you. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and start plotting for the moon, and hopefully we can get that burn. Oh, yeah, it's already set as target. Derp, derp, derp. All right, well... Awesome. If we could leave right at the ascending node. I don't think we can, though. I think that's going to put us a bit behind. Um, we really only have about a quarter degree of difference. There. There we go. Let's uh, focus view here. Come on. Thank you. Oh, that's awesome. That is... I'm very happy with this. Let's go ahead and put it on an impactor. 3,100. Oh, awesome. We are so well within margin. This is great. 
Don't let me jinx this. All right. So we're just going to go ahead and get turned to our node. Our burn is in about an hour, yeah, 54 minutes or so. It says it's going to take five minutes. I think we can take that as accurate because uh, we will not be staging during our burn, uh, unlike a lot of our interplanetary transfers. But, uh, man, so far so good for not having done a crude moonshot in so long. <laughs> I am, I'm pretty happy with this. I'm very confident that the Artemis will uh, have enough power. It was the big one the last few times I flew this on some uh, low Earth orbit milk runs. And also be able to re-enter safely. Uh, never had an issue with that as far as this one's concerned. Uh, unlike some of our previous flights on uh, Griffin rockets with a single crew uh, to the moon and back, or a single person crew to the moon and back. All right, well, that's good enough. Let's time warp around. Not, not too much, though. Well, we're within about four minutes of our burn time. Three minutes, 50 some odd seconds. Uh, I don't particularly want to go a little early. So it's at uh, 200 or two minutes 41 is uh, about when I want to start lighting it up. If I were to do a uh, half and half. All right. So we'll go ahead and start to ullage in the engine here. Very unstable. Come on. Some stability, please. Unstable. All right. Risky. It's improving. Very stable. Ignition. And we'll just go ahead and lean on these thrusters. And no, no, we won't. I will want them later for when it's time to do the most painful thing ever of docking. Which, of course, we have to do, because you don't see anything that's going to land on the moon or impact it attached up here, do you? So, yeah, it's it's in here. All right, well, I'm, I'm not going to make you sit through another four minutes of this, but uh, I will tell you about our crew a little bit. I didn't do that at the launch pad like I normally do. Uh, Valentin is at the controls. Uh, retired comedian John Oliver is hanging out there, and along with uh, engineer Nina, the last name I can't even try to pronounce, presumably Russian. Way to go, guys. That is just the most confounding assemblage of consonants I've ever seen. Oh, I overshot by 7.3 meters per second. Which means I missed the moon entirely. Awesome. <laughs> I'm just going to try to use RCS to correct. I have one ignition left on that J2. I'd rather not use it. I... Alright, well, what I am going to do is also unlock... Yeah, see, I drained a little fuel from this to save some weight. Um...
So per the Apollo program, uh, we're doing this pretty much by their book. And there go the dogs. All right, so this is just a matter of trying to level things out just a bit. Oh boy, did not like that very much. Uh, okay, I'm going to have to unlock my uh, other thrusters. I typically like to save those for re-entry, but I guess we don't have much of a choice. So, we'll just fire all the thrusters all at once. Alright, and try to get this back on course here. Docked. Uh, that actually may have been the least painful docking uh, I've ever done. How much did it throw off my telemetry, though? Well, enough for MechJeb to still have a friggin' heart attack about it. But uh, that's that's no big deal, really. All right. So one last thing I wanted to do while we were here is uh, open up all of these little tanks and uh, drain them into the Artemis because why not? <laughs> Game's gonna let me do it, I'm gonna take advantage. In, in, not much, but every little bit helps, right? Okay. And then we will say goodbye to our J2 stage, decouple. And we'll just uh, back it up a little bit. I can go ahead and disable these thrusters and save that fuel for landing. And now you can see that our cargo is pretty tiny. Uh, this here is obviously the landing portion. That there is our impactor portion. We'll activate that. So we will undock this, decouple that, and let it sit in orbit. It's got oogles of battery, so I'm not really worried about it having to go in orbit while we set this down on the surface, hopefully softly. Uh, this thing on its own has about two and a half kilometers per second at delta V. So that should be well more than enough uh, than what a landing would normally require. Uh, it's on independent power and comms, etc. So uh, we should be able, once this is down, to just uh, launch uncrewed impactors all the time and make lots of money. We're going to get paid like 375 grand for slamming stuff into the moon, plus another like 375 grand for doing our crewed orbital, which well more than enough pays for this mission. So. Uh, upgrades to the Artemis since, oh, uh, that was not what I meant to click on, but yeah, I guess we'll need that anyway. Include uh, these upgraded solar panels, uh, some tweaks to the fuel to uh, tune it specifically for this mission. Uh, this thing was always intended to do more than just go to low Earth orbit. Um, presumably it was going to be the crewed portion of a interplanetary, possibly a Mars mission, but we have yet to see one of those be able to come to fruition. But that's what it was in testing for, and that was what it was kind of the proving ground for uh, how we can do that. Obviously, it will be part of a much larger mothership, but as far as what they might be coming home in, it'll probably look something like this. So um, we'll just get the rest of these solar panels deployed, because why not? Last thing we need is to be losing energy, which, let's check that. Okay, we are way charging stuff. That's really good to know. Very sorry about my angry, angry dog. And on that note, <laughs> I think that's gonna do it for us today, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I do appreciate it, and I'll see all of you in the next one. The dog says bye. See you later.